have the privilege of being in the Lord's house. Thank you for each one that is here. You know, this Memorial Day weekend, and I was thinking uh, I've got had a lot of thoughts going through my head about Memorial Day, and you know, uh, when you think of the word memorial is a uh, it's a, a memorial is an object uh, which serves as a memory of something, usually a person who's died or an event. Popular forms of memorials include landmark objects such as statues or fountains, uh, maybe parks. Uh, most common type of memorial in, around here would probably be a gravestone, uh, but just commemorating those who have died. If you go to Washington, D.C., there's memorials all over the place. You got uh, the Jefferson Memorial, you got the Lincoln Memorial, you got the World War II Memorial, you got the Vietnam Memorial. There's there's all kinds of memorials. You got the Arlington Cemetery. There's a memorial for thousands of people who have died. And um, you know, for us as Christians, I, I think uh, I just want to to think about memorials in in our life, things that we we need to to remember. And I want to read some scripture out of. Uh, Joshua chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. Joshua chapter 4. And we'll start right there. And uh, I may cover a lot of scripture this morning. And uh, I never want to apologize for giving you scripture because uh, scripture is always right. But um, would you bear with us this morning and uh, bear with me on my thought process. I'm not sure. Uh, Hope we don't go off on too many rabbit trails this morning, but um, Joshua chapter 4, starting at, uh, let's go ahead and start at verse 1. It, seemed, it says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people of the, every tribe, out of, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. And Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of, the tri out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of, of Jordan, and take you up, every man of you, a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask your fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it came passed over when it passed over Jordan the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever and God have blessing to the reading of his word let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer Father we thank you for this day we thank you Lord for the privilege to be able to preach and Lord I just need your help as always and the Father I pray that you would take uh, these feeble lips of clay and the Father and that you would Use them for your glory and honor, Lord, that we might be able to say something this morning, Lord, that would stir our hearts and help us as Christians, Lord, to draw closer to you. Lord, help us to remember the things that we need to remember as Christians, and Lord, that uh, we just have some memorials in our life, Lord, that remind us of uh, the things that are important. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, and we'll give you the praise and the glory for all that's accomplished here this morning. And um, in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Uh, Again, you know, tomorrow's Memorial Day, and it's a, it's a federal holiday that uh, we observed the last Monday of May. Uh, and you know, some of the older ones called it Decoration Day. I can remember my grandparents on my dad's side that they, always called Decoration Day, not Memorial Day. They, that, that's the day you go and dec decorate the, the graves. So, uh, it, it's a time to remember the things that in the past, maybe people or events or, or things that. Uh, changed our life for people that were special to us, but um, the memorial Memorial Day is about rem is about remembering, and uh, I want us to to remember some things here, think some things that are important. Uh, you know, we live in a time today where it seems as if 
God is becoming less and less important to the people of America. Friends, we need to remember God mm -hmm. uh, now more than ever. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was thinking this, this weekend, as our, our president said, that the churches need to, to be able to go back to church. And, you know, I, honestly, I don't think the governor's ever had any right to tell churches that they should not have church. Uh, you can choose not to stay home, not to go to church and choose to stay home, but I don't think the government ever had a right to tell people not to go uh, because that's a freedom that we have in this country. That's, that's in our Constitution. You know, uh, but I, I, we ought to remember uh, what God has done for us and, and who, how important he is. You know, the world today doesn't think that God's that important, but you and I as Christians know better, and uh, he ought to be central to our life. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 11 through 14, it says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built godly ha goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy, thy herds and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You know, here in Deuteronomy, as, the, as this was written, he said, you know, don't forget God. There's going to come a time when you've been blessed, you'll be in, in nice houses uh, that you're dwelling in, your herds will be multiplied, your flocks will be multiplied, you'll have plenty of money and silver and gold and all that will be multiplied. Uh, then your heart will be lifted up and, and said, you'll forget God. People say, well, I'm sure they were saying, no, I won't do that. Uh, hey, there's a time in America that, that God was important. You know, I, I think of uh, uh, my grandparents and uh, that generation and, and how important God was and, and he is. He is to us, too. That we, just our nation has forgotten that. And we've forgotten his greatness and how important he was or he is in the establishment of our great country. America, was no matter what anybody else in the world wants to say, no matter what the liberals say in our government, no matter what anybody has to say, America was founded upon the principles of God's word. America was founded upon a, a, a godly heritage for us as a nation. We need to remember the greatness of God and him allowing us to uh, to have this great country that we have. We need, we need to remember his righteousness and his mercy, his grace and his hatred for sin. God doesn't like sin. And we're in a nation today where our nation is, is literally embracing sin uh, in so many different avenues. you got people that are embracing the homosexual agenda. we got people that are embracing the abortion. we got people that are embracing uh, you know, adultery and, and just a multitude of things in our nation. They'll, they'll embrace Drug, you know, drug use and, uh, you know, well, let's legalize marijuana and let's legalize this. You know, they're just trying to legalize, quote unquote, sin. Uh, but you know what? No matter what they say, God's word is still going to always be true. We need to remember God's word, what God says. And remember uh, who he is. Remember that God hates sin. Remember that there's a, he's a God of love, but he's also a God of wrath. And one day people are going to stand before him. We talked about that a little bit on Wednesday night. You know, one day it says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Guess what, friends? Every single one of us, uh, if you're a Christian, you're going to stand before him at the, at the judgment seat of Christ uh, and give an account of your stewardship as a Christian. Now, we don't like to think about that, but we will one day give an account. And guess what? Those who are lost are going to stand before him at the great white throne judgment and give an account Well, it'll be too, uh, as well, but it'll be too late for them at that point. They're going to be lost. They are lost if they're standing before him at the great white throne judgment. Uh, you know, all these things, we need to remember what God's word says. Remember who God is. You know, uh, and, and what it means to, to serve the Lord. Uh, you know, another scripture here, it says in Psalm 103, verse five, verses 1 through 5, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Forget not all of his benefits. You know, 
Thank God for his benefits toward us and all that he's done. He's blessed us so much. He's blessed us individually. He's blessed us as a nation. Uh, but, you know, we're a country that is, is forgetting God day by day, uh, little by little. You know, one of the things that has always bothered me is, is it just seems like every generation gets a little bit further away from God. Oh, you know, uh, our parents were very, our grandparents were very faithful, and our parents are faithful, and then it just seems like it just a little less and a little less and a little less as time goes on. It becomes less important. You know, uh, church has become less important to people uh, in the day and time that we live in. Uh, well, we can just stay at home and, and watch it on uh, 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 live stream. Uh, friends, live stream does not take the place of church. Now, you might be able to listen to the service, but we know we're supposed to gather together as a church, uh, you know, to be here and to worship with one another uh, and to fellowship with one another and to enjoy the love, the love that we share as brothers and sisters in Christ. We as Christians need to remember uh, our service to the Lord. Then think about uh, our, our freedom that we have here in, our, in this nation. Remember what it cost for us to have the privilege to be able to worship like we do. Uh, you know, our, our forefathers fought and died for the privilege to be able to, to come and to worship freely, to be able to worship the God of heaven. And I know that it's not the politically correct thing to say, but, I, you know, I don't believe our forefathers fought and died to worship Buddha. I don't believe our forefathers fought and died to worship Allah. I don't believe our forefathers fought and died to worship anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that's who they fought and died for. That's the God that they fought to, 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 to be able to worship freely. Uh, and he's the only God. That's who they fought for, for, for us to be able to worship freely. And we've forgotten that. We, we have, well, just freedom of religion. Uh, you know, I'm telling you, folks, religion, that word religion, uh, religion sends people to hell every day. Religion, you know, are you religious? I don't know if you're religious or not, but you better be saved. Amen. You know, uh, are you a Christian? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? You know, I've had so many people say, well, I'm a religious person. Well, you can be religious about a lot of things. You know, I go to work religiously. You know, uh, I eat religiously. Uh, you know, you can start, and you think, well, those are silly things. But that's what, you know, religion, you start talking about those things. But are you saved? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? That's what our forefathers fought and died for, for the privilege to be able to worship the God of heaven, to be able to uh, have the freedoms that we have in our country today. And freedom comes with responsibility. And people today don't really want responsibility. I, you know, I shudder to think what would happen if we had to fight World War II today. You know, America would be ready to surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we have the gumption to be able to go and, and fight a war like that, uh, to fight against the evil that they fought against in World War II and, and what it cost. I don't think we'd have that. Uh, that's a difference in, a, in the thought process today and how far away we've gotten away from the importance of freedom that we have in our country today. But let's always remember the freedom that we have and what it costs us to, to have it. Remember... Uh, the salvation that we that we have and and what it costs there uh you know G god gave his very best so you and i could be saved the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord uh first peter 1 18 and 19 says for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things the silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot Hey, remember what your salvation costs. Remember what God did in order to give you salvation. Uh, you know, thank Him for the Holy Spirit dealing in your life and drawing you to Him. I, you know, I'm thankful for that. Remember the day that you got saved. What a memorial that should be in our life. Can you remember the day you got saved? You not, might not remember uh, the exact day as far as the date. Uh, but I, or even the day of the week, but I, I dare say you probably remember when you got saved. You remember that time when you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's a memorial. You know, when the devil gets on you and says, look, look at you, what do you, who do you think you are? You can take him back to that point in time in your life when you trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and say, here's the memorial. Uh, I remember the day 
that I trusted Jesus as my Savior. I remember the day that I, that I asked Him to come into my heart. I remember the day that I asked Him to forgive me of my sins and that He forgave me of my sins. I remember that day. And because of that, I know that I'm saved. The Scripture says these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. I'm glad that I know that I have eternal life. And you can know that. You know, people are constantly saying, yeah, somebody, uh, do you know if you die today, you go to heaven? Well, I hope so. You know what? We don't have to hope we're going to go to heaven. That's right. uh, we can know that we're going to heaven. Uh, you know, uh, if you die today, are you going to heaven? Well, I, I think I will. You know, we don't have to doubt whether or not we're going to go. He says, these things are written that you might know that you have eternal life. Have you trusted him as your personal Savior? That's the key right there. Have you trusted him? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart and to save you? If you've done that, then the Bible says that you're saved. Uh, you know, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you trust him, ask him to come to your heart, repent of your sins, he'll save you. He promised you that he would. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 17, says, For you have, for you have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I'm thankful for his spirit that dwells in me, that bears, bears witness with my spirit that I'm his child. You know, that, that bearing witness... I'm glad that he has done that. He's given us assurance of that. It says, then if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. I'm thankful that we can know that we're saved and know that we're going to heaven. And that, you know, that memorial of remembering what, what Christ has done for us, remembering that we're saved, remember the day, that's a memorial in our life. It ought to be something that is set up there and we remember what God's done for us. Another thing we can do, we can always keep uh, our responsibilities as a Christian in remembrance. What we ought to be doing as, as Christians. Uh, Psalm 78, verses 1 through 8, he says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, our fathers have told, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children. Showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and, and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should uh, make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the, children of, uh, even the children which should be born, which should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but let His commandments, but keep His commandments, and might be as their, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Now, our responsibilities as Christians, and uh, first of all, I think, is to make sure that we we give it to the next generation. Uh, you know, I, I like what this passage of scripture says in Psalm, 70, Psalm 78 uh, verses 1 through 8 uh, you know it says verse 4 says that we will not hide them from their children showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done you know so many people you know have not passed that on to the next generation they've not taught their children uh, what it means to serve the Lord and what God has done in the past and what he's, what he's done for us that he died for us that he gave his son Jesus to die for us so, so that we can be saved. Nobody, you know, they're just forgetting to pass it on. That's the most important thing that you could ever pass on to your children. It doesn't make any difference if you give them a good education so that they can be a doctor. It doesn't make any difference if you give them a good education so they can be a lawyer or you know, whatever so that they can be somebody famous. None of that will make a difference in eternity. You know, the one thing that will make a difference is have you taught them about Jesus mm -hmm. and what he did upon the cross of Calvary, that he died for their sins and that they need to be saved. And the only way they're going to go to heaven is they trust him as their personal Savior. That's what's going to make a difference. He says, showing them to the next generation, to the, showing them to the generation to come. I like what it says there. Uh, it says, for he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. We should, we should constantly be talking to our children about the things of God. 
You know, as they get older, there's going to point, come a point in time when you're not going to be, they're not going to listen to you like they do when they're little. Uh, they're going to start forming their own opinions uh, and whether, whether they're right or wrong. But they're, if, if you're not diligent in, in giving them the word of God and teaching them the things of God, their opinions are going to be like the things of the world. The world's going to contaminate them. As much as you try to teach them the things of God, the world's still going to have an influence on them. The thing is, we need to constantly be battling the world's influence with the, the Word of God, constantly uh, giving them the Word of God, because the, the Word of God is the antidote for the world uh, and the worldly influence. It says that the generation to come might know then even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Right there is the big crux of the problem, is that if, if I fail to teach my kids, uh, Bryant and Josiah and Brittany, if, and you know, if I fail to teach them, then they're not going to arise and teach them to their children. Right. You know, and and that's, that's the importance of it. You and I as Christians, that's the greatest thing that we can do, is to teach our children the Word of God and teach our children about God so that they can pass the torch to the next generation. And it scares me to think that we're not doing that as we should. We're not as diligent to take that. It, it needs to be important. It needs to be so important that that's, and people think, well, that's all you ever think about, that that's the one thing that really makes a difference. Because if they become somebody famous, or if they become a, a, a great uh, scholar or whatever, it doesn't make a difference throw something out there that you think, is important, and they never trust Jesus Christ as their Savior, what difference is that going to make in eternity? Nothing. It will make no difference. They'll die and go to hell. And what difference will that make? You know, you've lost them forever. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, which should arise and declare them to their children, that they might, I like verse 7 there, that they might set their hope in God. What's your hope in this morning? Is your hope in the United States government? I hope not. <laughs> is your hope in, uh, you know, your bank account? Is your hope in your job? None of that's going to save you. Hey, if your hope's in God, you can have a positive attitude if the world's falling apart around you. Mm -hmm. You know what? When the world falls apart, we can say, you know what? My hope's not in that. My hope is in God. My hope is in what he's done. You know, and, and people say, well, that's just a wish. A hope is a wish. No, a hope is an earnest expectation. My earnest expectation is that I'm going to be with, he with God in heaven. My earnest expectation is that Jesus is coming again soon. We need to be ready and we need to teach our children. The generation to come says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. That's an important thing for us as Christians, you know, to constantly have a memorial there, uh, teaching our children the things of God. It's important. You know, remember that, that heritage that we have. Uh, in, uh, the word heritage means a, a characteristic or culture or tradition handed down from, from one's ancestors. Where we came from, our parents, our families, you know, that's our heritage. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 127, verse 3, says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. The way we raise our children, the way we teach our children. Uh, one of the saddest commentaries in the whole Bible, and I've read this many, many times here, is in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, when it says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, talking about Joshua's generation. And right here it says, And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done in Israel. And when Joshua's generation died, there was that great generation that went in and possessed the promised land. Joshua's generation one day died. All that generation was gone. The only problem is, is there arose another generation which knew not the Lord. And whose fault was that? As great accomplishments as Joshua's generation had, the reason that next generation didn't know the Lord is because Joshua's generation failed to pass the torch. They failed to, to
to pass on that heritage as a Christian. Remember what God's done for us. Remember, let's always remember our adversary. You know, uh, things happen in our life. Maybe we have scars in our life. But guess what? Those scars can be a memorial to us to remember things by. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Hey, the devil's our adversary. He doesn't like you, especially if you're a child of God. He wants to see people die and go to hell. He wants to see people rejecting Jesus Christ. You say, well, why would he want that? Because he knows it breaks the heart of God. Uh, you know, he's constantly looking to destroy us and to destroy our testimony as Christians. He wants us to break that godly heritage. He wants us to not pass it on to that next generation. Don't let your guard down. There's too much at stake. Keep on standing for what the Word of God says. Keep on... Uh, being vigilant about the things of God and, and watching for the adversary because he's always there. And then finally I'll close with this if Kim gets the song of invitation. Uh, let's always keep our, our thoughts and remembrance on the blessed hope. We already mentioned that just momentarily, but uh, Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 says, And while he looked steadfastly toward heaven, <clears throat> as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You know, our blessed hope is that Jesus is coming again. You know, if, if anything, through what's happened with this virus and the pandemic, it ought to make us realize how quickly, how close it is that Jesus could be coming, or is coming. You know, uh, to me, as I've looked and seen the, the way the world has reacted, it, it's shown me just how quickly uh, the world will gather around something. You know, somehow the, the Antichrist is going to, you know, come on the scene and, and the world's going to fall down before him. I can see how that could happen very easily now with how quickly the world came in and rallied around this pandemic thing. Uh, and they just follow whatever the CDC says or whatever the World Health Organization says. They just bow down to it and do whatever they say. Right or wrong. Hey, the, the Antichrist will be the same way. You know, our, our hope is in Christ. That's who, we're, that's who we're looking for. Don't get all caught up with the things of this world because, hey, guess what? This is all just temporary. That's right. we're, we're just passing through. And we put a lot of emphasis on this, on the things of this world, but this is temporary. Heaven is eternal. Let's remember what God's called us here to do. We're here to serve Him. We're here to be a light in this community. We're here to take the gospel. You know, don't don't ever forget what we're supposed to be doing as Christians. We have, the devil's good about getting us sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. Remember those things. I, I, I was reading and I came across this statement about Joshua and the stones that he pulled out of the out of the, the river there. It says, These stones, when they were seen, these stones preached at once the duty of remembering and the danger of forgetting. You know, there ought to be some things in our life that help us remember the duty of remembering and the danger of forgetting. Think of the danger of forgetting God. Think of the danger of forgetting to serve Him, forgetting to pass that on to the next generation. Souls are at stake. Heaven and hell is at stake if we forget to worship him and pass that on as we should. Let's get a song of invitation. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, you need to be saved. If you're a Christian, maybe God's just dealing with you about something. You just want to come pray about it. Hey, the altar's open. We want to encourage you to come and do business with God at any time. The altar's always open. Page 306. 306. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm.
attention to what the words say here. Have I no